everybody to Saturday Stories, our virtual programming this morning. And we have the most amazing, fun illustrator who's also an author, and he's written and illustrated many picture books that are award-winning. I'll tell you a bit more about those. And he's gonna be featuring his Bologna and Friends um, graphic novel this morning and showing you the behind the scenes of how he creates his graphic novels. So I would love to introduce to you Greg Pizzoli, who's, as I said, joining us from Philadelphia. And he is a multi-award winner for his wonderful picture books. Um, some of them you are probably familiar with, um, The Book Hog, uh, The Watermelon Seed, um, Good Night Owl. He's actually been the illustrator for other books with uh, Mac Burnett um, and also Margaret Wise Brown of Good Night Moon. I mean, he has done amazing books. So if you haven't already found them in your library or gone to the bookstore and checked them out, you will be in for a treat because Greg is actually an amazing character creator. So we're really going to find out how he, how his mind works, how he gets his drawings uh, down on the paper, and even how he creates graphic novels, which is a genre that Bologna and Friends is. So there are two books in the series right now, no, three books in the series. And his latest one is, is it two, two books? Well, there's two out, there's a third one coming. Oh, yes, there's a third one yes. coming. Yes. Okay. So Baloney and Friends uh, um, Going Up is his latest book. And then this one is the first book. So you get to meet the friends here first. And there are four friends Baloney himself being Pig and Peanut the Horse, Biz the Bumblebee. And then there's um, Grumpy Old Crabbit, which is a big name. Um, so these are really fun books. I know kids love to do um, cartooning. And so you'll get to see how Greg does this and he'll give you some really wonderful tips. He lives in Philadelphia and his wife is also an artist. He's a, a wonderful fiber and um, sculptor. And she, they have a, a new daughter, which is very exciting. And cats and dogs. <laughs> So joining us this morning is Greg Pizzoli. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Over oh, to well, you. thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Greg Pizzoli. Thanks very much for, for joining me here. Um, I am coming at you live from Philadelphia. This is my studio. I'm in the kitchen of my studio right now. I'm hoping to uh, sort of disassemble everything and maybe give you a little bit of a tour at some point during our talk. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, my name is Greg and I've made a bunch of books. I have some books here. Um, I wrote and illustrated this book, The Watermelon Seed. This was my first book that was ever published. Um, came out about eight years ago. I also wrote and illustrated this book, Good Night Owl. And the book hog. I just brought the ones that have the shiny stickers on yeah. to show you because they're, they're the most impressive. Um, and then, yeah, my new series is Bologna and Friends. Uh, books one and two are out now. Uh, they're graphic novels. And I just finished up book number three. So the things that I want to talk to you guys about today are just a little about a little bit about me, uh, sort of how I work, things that I uh, sort of techniques that I try uh, when I am making work. Just some drawing. So some drawing stuff that I thought you guys should all have if you want to draw along or make things um, as I talk would be paper. I don't know. I have another camera here where you can see. I guess I don't need to go to that camera to show you what paper is. You know what paper is, but paper. <laughs> um, something that you like to draw with. I like to draw a lot with pencil, um, but also markers and pens. If you like to draw with crayons, whatever, whatever you want. And you should have a pair of scissors. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a book today. Um, and you will need a pair of scissors to do that part of it. Um, so if at some point you wanna grab paper and something to draw with and a pair of scissors, that would be great. Okay. All right. So first thing I want to show you guys a little bit about me, just tell you a little bit about who I am. In case you're not familiar with my work, um, I am just going to share my screen here. I'm going to do that so you guys can see this little thing that I put together here. All right. All right. 
So you guys should see a little thing that says Greg Pizzoli in pink letters. All right, so that's me, I'm Greg Pizzoli. I live in Philadelphia, Claire said. I have lived here in Philly for about 15 years. Um, I went to school here. What brought me to Philadelphia was I joined AmeriCorps after college. So I did two years of the AmeriCorps Volunteers and Service to America program. Um, so I did one year in Rhode Island and one year at Temple University in Philly. And I just liked Philly so much that I stayed. Been here a long time. Um, I live in a tiny little 12 foot wide house that was built in 1840. Um, and it looks kind of like that, kind of what it looks like. That's where I live. And I live there with my wife. Her name is Kay Healy. I wrote her website up here, kayhealy.com. And she makes sculpture and uh, sort of fiber installations. She makes, as you can see, like a lot of plants. Uh, so these are all screen printed and hand painted and sewn and stuffed and sort of three-dimensional uh, kind of cool things. So she is pretty cool. And then uh, we have two cats. We have two cats. They're both pretty cute. This one is kind of a maniac. He's a little troublemaker. Um, and we have a dog. We have a dog. Uh, who usually comes to the studio with me, but I thought she would probably bark while I was talking, so uh, she didn't come with me today. Um, and what I do as an author and an illustrator beyond making books, you know, drawing pictures and writing words, is I travel a lot. I go on tour a lot um, to go to schools. You can see this little girl here named Kimmy. We drew together in front of her entire school. Uh, with lipstick. You know, I like to draw with different kinds of material sometimes. Um, and so we drew with lipstick, um, which is a lot of fun. This is me on tour with my friend Mac, who we have made nine books together. So we have toured together quite a bit. And here's me at a school too. So I like to uh, read with kids and draw with kids. And I like to travel and um, meet people, meet book lovers um, all over the country and the world. So uh, I guess all that to say is I really love my job, really love what I do. Uh, this is my studio. This is where I work. Uh, this is maybe, it might be a little cleaner than this right now, kind of a messy <laughs> shot uh, right here, but uh, that's, that's basically what it looks like. And I have my little reading nook area over here. I have a lot of books. Um, this very wonderful Tommy Younger poster uh, that I have here. It's like one of my favorite prized possessions. And um, this is my dad. Um, part of my studio life has become that I caretake for my dad. I sort of take care of him because he has a disease called dementia that affects his memory. So he can't live on his own anymore. Um, so about a month before COVID, uh, we moved him out here. So my studio is a three-story building. My wife is upstairs on the third floor. It's her studio. The second floor is my studio. And the first floor is my dad's apartment. That's where he lives. So he doesn't live with us, but we see him every day because we work every day. Because if you, if you are a self-employed artist, you work every day, that's how it goes. <laughs> um, so I kind of think, when I think of my work, I kind of think of it in terms of I make books and then I make other stuff, right? So we're gonna start with some other stuff. Um, these are some tattoo designs that I made probably almost 10 years ago. These are tattoo designs uh, for a company out of Brooklyn called Tatley. These are like temporary tattoos that you can uh, sort of wash off with soap and water. Um, so Tatley still sells these. Um, they're pretty cool. I'd like to maybe do another set of them because it's been a while since I've done one. Sometimes I make uh, fabric kind of licensed stuff or I'll draw my characters. Um, this is, I don't actually know what this is called, but it's like a ribbon, it's like an embroidered ribbon uh, that you would maybe use as a lanyard or like for the edge of a quilt or something like that. Um, I made a few different designs of those. 
Here's like a back to school one. And I make a lot of buttons with a company out of Portland, Oregon called Badge Bomb that they sell their stuff all over the country, like in a lot of museums, gift shops and stuff you'd find. Um, there's their buttons and magnets and things that they make. They do a lot of stuff with Gemma Carell. She does a lot of work for them. Um, but anyway, these are little readers. Um, like here is a bookworm. Um, there's the book hog. My book, the book hog that I showed you guys earlier actually started as a button. It was just kind of a little pun. And uh, I had an editor who just kept telling me like, that is a good book title. You know, you should think of a book for that. And eventually I did. Um, and here's some more buttons. I like this one, don't bug me, I'm reading. Kind of like, it's like kind of sums me up maybe a little bit. Um, and I also do sometimes do games for like newspapers. I don't know, there used to be these things called newspapers that they <laughs> printed uh, daily and they would have uh, little games and comics and stuff for kids in them. Uh, this is a spot the differences that I made. Uh, for a newspaper insert. And here is a maze about Napoleon, uh, sort of in the shape of Napoleon's hat. I like history a lot too. History is just something I've always been interested in. Just, uh, some of the books that I've made are history books or nonfiction books. Um, and so I think like when I was a younger illustrator, I would maybe sometimes try to think of like, well, what should I what should I make, you know, what, what, what's going to help me get a book deal or what's going to help me uh, sort of succeed as an illustrator. And what I found really is that I just should just do whatever I'm attracted to. You know, I, I went through a Napoleon phase where I read a bunch of books about Napoleon and learned about that. I had a podcast that I listened to all the time about Napoleon. And so I just drew a Napoleon thing. And um, like I said, I like traveling a lot. So this is a, uh, Set that I made a series of books I did with Chronicle Books and the author Jennifer Adams, who does the Baby Lit books. Um, we did books about New York, London, Paris, and San Francisco. And as part of the New York set, I made this little paper skyline uh, thing of New York City. So, like, there's the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty. Uh, this is just a fat little dog that I drew. Uh, he just enjoys reading books, which I like too. This is a, a print I made, a uh, screen print I made years and years ago. And here's another screen print that I have framed behind me, but I took it down because I thought it was like a little too distracting so on the floor. <laughs> and sometimes my characters get made into stuffed animals. These are made by a company called Yacht Toy out of Manhattan. And um, they have made a few different, you don't see them all here, but uh, maybe when I do the studio tour, I can show them all to you. They've done three different sets of my characters for me. And this is a poster that I made for the American Library Association. Read, you know, I've made a couple of these posters. I made one just recently for Bologna and Friends. And um, that's kind of become what my illustration work has been about. It's about encouraging kids to read by drawing cool pictures, I think, and writing stories that are usually kind of on the easy to read side for kids who are what they call emerging readers, who are just maybe not being read to anymore, maybe are picking books up for them uh, for themselves for the first time and reading them to themselves. Um, so my books, like my pictures, uh, tend to be somewhat simple, although as you know, someone I admire quite a bit, Mo Willems has often said, simple is the opposite of easy, right? And it's sometimes difficult to, to get things simplified down to their most pure form, which is what I strive to do. So some of the books that I've made, I'm gonna show you some books that I've made. So I'm just gonna stop my share and go back to my in-person uh, camera and just show you some of the books that I've made again. Like I showed you, before I showed you the watermelon seed. You know, my books, like I said, are tend to be pretty simple, like not a ton of text on each page. This whole book, this whole picture book is only 140 words long. Um, and 
but it tells a whole story. It's got some jokes. And I tend to work with very limited color palettes. Uh, most of my books are printed as uh, like a screen print. You know, I went to school uh, and studied printmaking. I was in a band that uh, I screen printed all of our posters and stuff. So I have a lot of screen printing experience. I, just, I have a screen printing shop upstairs in my wife's studio. And uh, most of my books are kind of designed that way with a limited color palette, which means using only three or four colors most of the time. Uh, so here's another one you can see. This is also pink and green, slightly different pink and green, pink, green, and black. Um, but I really like to work with a very limited color palette. Okay. Um, other things about me, uh, other things I like to do besides drawing and writing, I spend a lot of time with my daughter. I have a 10 month old little girl. Um, so I spend a lot of time with her. Most of the time I work here in the morning till uh, the early afternoon and then I go home and take care of her for the afternoon. Um, I play a lot of video games, like video games a lot, um, mostly older stuff, um, like old Nintendo stuff. And I like hiking a lot, hiking, like going into the woods, getting out of the city and going into the woods is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, so that is all about me. Um, I think what I want to do now is just maybe draw something. I want to talk to you guys about uh, a picture book and sort of my process for making picture books. Um, but first, I thought maybe we'd just sort of like shake off the the uh, the jitters a little bit and we could draw something. So I'm going to show you a picture book called The Watermelon Seed. You know, I showed it to you guys already, but I'm actually going to show you a little bit about how I made that book. And, but first I wanna show you how I draw the character. So I draw the character, his name is Croc from the Watermelon Seed using only three shapes, three different shapes. So you guys probably all know how to, to do. I, I, I would guess that you all know how to draw these three shapes. So I'm gonna to try to center this paper up a little bit so it looks, uh, I don't know, there we go. Uh, so the three shapes you need to know how to do would be kind of like an oval shape like that a straight ish line like that just doesn't have to be perfectly straight you don't need don't need a ruler or anything but just kind of straight ish and then the letter u okay that's it if you can draw those three things you can draw the crocodile the same way that i do uh, in the watermelon seed. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So first of all, uh, I'm going to turn this U upside down and do one like that. And then I'm going to do a little straight line like that. And then I'm going to do another upside down U like that. Okay, so that's the crocodile, the top of its head. Let me get a, uh, let me get a reference here. There we go. There he is. You guys remember what he looks like. There he is. And then we're going to do a sideways letter U for his snout. Just like that. And then I'm going to use a straightish line to kind of close this up over here. And I'll use another straightish line down here. And for his teeth, I always draw him with nine teeth. Uh, so I do three, or yeah, I do sets of three, three sets of three, letter U. I go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Trust me, I have drawn this crocodile thousands of times. So uh, you kind of need to make a method <laughs> uh, so you can kind of do it while someone is talking to you and you're not uh, really thinking about it that much. <laughs> Um, and then the oval shape is just his eye, right? Which really is like two U's kind of smushed together, but I just call that its own shape. And then he's just got some little nostrils down here and some ovally kind of pupils, right? And so sometimes I will draw him holding a watermelon too, 
um, which really his hand is just four letter U's, right? It's like one, two, three, and then one to close it up like that. That's what his hand looks like. So I could just do one, two, three, close it up. One, two, three, close it up. And then if you want to give him some watermelon, you can just do a straightish line. U, 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 because presumably he would have chopped some of it, right? And then you can just fill this in here to give him a little watermelon. And then that oval shape, that oval shape comes in handy as a seed. Well, he's very afraid of swallowing a seed. <laughs> he's very afraid of seeds, I know. I don't want to put him through that, but that's, that's, that is how I do it. Um, so I want to show you guys a little bit about how I make picture books um, and just talk to you about the process a little bit. And I just, as a reminder, feel free to drop questions that you might have into the chat. Um, I'd really like this to be sort of helpful for anyone who wants any tips or uh, is looking for any info. So uh, don't be shy about that kind of thing. Your character right, so, is so endearing. I mean, just that crocodile. I, I want to be friends with that crocodile. <laughs> he could use it. He could use it. He is a very anxious crocodile. He's very excited about watermelon. He's sort of singularly focused on watermelon, but I think he would be a good friend to have around for sure. Oh, um, I have a quick question. Let's throw one in. How often oh, sure. do you call your characters to make them look the same each time? This is from Cheryl. So how often before you start to sort of feel like, oh, it's second nature, I guess she's asking, is it 10 times? Mm. That's a good question, <laughs> who knows? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, I mean, uh, you know, the crocodile from the watermelon seed, um, I have drawn him. So whenever I sign a book uh, of a copy of the watermelon seed, which admittedly has been a lot, I kind of draw the crocodile in there. So I, that's why I sort of have this like, Oh, I do three teeth and because I need to know how to draw him somewhat on brand <laughs> while I'm also asking a person how to spell their name and I'm, you know, under a tent and it's like really hot and uncomfortable. So <laughs> I have practiced that quite a bit just by doing it a ton. Um, I think my other characters, I have little tricks uh, that I do to try to keep them looking the same, but I think for me, I think the real answer there is that I try to keep them simple. I try to keep the characters like relatively simple. I don't do a ton of costuming. I don't do a ton of, um, you know, like really a lot of like heavy uh, distinctive features because I know that I'm going to be, particularly with graphic novels, I know I'm going to be drawing those characters over and over and over again. Um, and I like to work fast. I like I like the energy that my work has when it's a little looser. It doesn't seem yeah. too finicky. But it did not start that way, right? Like a picture book rarely starts the way it ends. Like the book that you see in the store with the nice jacket and the hardcover, it can all seem like it was sort of predetermined and and you know just kind of dropped from the sky perfectly formed like that and I'm sure there are artists who see their work that way and it uh kind of works for them that way but it does not work that way for me it's more of a process um so this is sort of an early draft of the book that became the watermelon seed and I'm going to talk more about this format, the way that I sketch things in a, in a couple minutes. Um, but I just want to show you guys, like, try to imagine this is an aerial view. So this is an overhead shot of a whole book, right? So like you open the book, these are the end papers, this is the title page. And then each of these is a page, is a spread in the book. So I'm just going to walk you through this early draft of the watermelon seed. It was called Crocs Gotta Go, Go, Go. But it was, it was not a bathroom book, it's not a potty book. It was like about him trying to get to a baseball game. And he's interrupted by someone reading the book. And 
he's really annoyed by that person because he's like, look, I'm trying to get to a baseball game. Why are you bothering me by reading my book right now? Like, leave me alone. And he gets in his truck and he's like, yeah, yeah, I see there's a Yeti over there. I don't care. I got to go. Or there's a bunch of lions here in the jungle. There's elephants. I, I don't have time for this. I got to get to my game. And then there's a car crash. He gets in a big car crash and his car is destroyed. But luckily, there's an alien ship that comes from the sky, tractor beams him up and drops him right where he wants to be. So it's a happy ending. At the end, he gets to the baseball game. So <laughs> there, that is a very, very early rough draft from, you know, maybe 10 years ago. So maybe my early first drafts aren't quite this wild <laughs> anymore. Maybe they're a little, a little more uh, sensible, but everybody starts somewhere, right? And so there are two things from this first draft uh, that made it into the final book. There's one thing you might be thinking to yourself, there's no watermelon in this, right? Like there's no, there's no watermelon anywhere in this first draft of the watermelon seed, which seems somewhat integral to the final book. Um, but there is a crocodile character and that crocodile character is talking directly to the reader. He's, he's, he's doing what's called breaking the fourth wall and he's, sort of saying it's not saying like the crocodile loved watermelon so much that he ate it all the time he looks right at the camera and he says or at the viewer and he says I love watermelon talking right to you um so those are two things that even though the rest of this first draft is kind of trash and I threw it all away uh where it belongs but I was able by generating this idea and like sort of iterating on it over and over again, I was able to pull those two things out of it that I liked. Um, and I'm gonna show you the first, you know, later on, like this is probably draft 10, it was called Croc and the Watermelon Seed and it didn't break the fourth wall. I experimented with like, ever since he was a teeny tiny baby crocodile, Croc loved watermelon instead of saying, I love watermelon. Um, which is a much more active tone, I think. And I'm gonna show you some lines that got cut. Uh, at one point, there was a line that said, he was going to grow a watermelon in his stomach and die, and that was it, period. So that's a little dark, maybe, a little, <laughs> little, uh, little dark. At one point, there was an emergency room sequence and the doctors were going to have to cut him open to get the watermelon out. We'll have to cut you open, the first doctor said, was a line in a draft of this book that I read to you. This book, the same book. It started uh, in a much, much different place. Um, but eventually, I kind of came up. Uh, I think it was my friend Josh gave me the idea of doing something about uh, swallowing a seed, you know, having, uh, which was a fear, which, you know, I had a grandfather, or I still have my grandfather, luckily, but my grandfather told me when I was a kid uh, that if I swallowed a seed, it would grow in my stomach. I think that's like a natural thing for adults to tease kids about. Um, and eventually, I kind of came up with that concept for this crocodile and did this little dummy. I did this little like sketch. So again, this is like the aerial view of the whole book. And you can maybe recognize some of the pages that you saw, like where you just said, I just swallowed a seed. I swallowed a seed. You know, it all kind of started in what are called thumbnail sketches, little tiny sketches. Um, and then I'll kind of do like a color version of it and just kind of plan the whole book out that way. And so as you guys are, you know, were kind enough to visit me here in my studio, that is an important part of my process. And I wanted to share it with you a little bit. Um, <laughs> you know, an important part for me is drawing the whole book on one sheet of paper, sort of getting an aerial shot of the whole book and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, you know, at, at a glance, basically. I'll show you what it looks like. I have one here. 
um, that helps me to lay out books. I use them all the time. Um, and what I use them for a lot of times is I will just do little tiny sketches and I can cut them out and paste them to, like in different places, tape them around and sort of see, well, this page doesn't work here, but it would work really well down here or something. Um, so I encourage you guys to, to go to my website and check that out. Um, I think it's, it's probably worthwhile okay. to do. Thanks for um, that. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to uh, maybe do another question or something and then we can draw a little bit maybe? I can, I can just, you know, give you a little insight to your audience. So you have got visitors from participants from all over as far away as Chile and also all over America, Illinois, Atlanta, uh, Ohio, uh, upstate New York, New York, and we've got a lot of Jack fans. Um, oh, okay, great, great. <laughs> Why don't we draw Jack then? We can draw. We'll just do a little. We'll do a little drawing break uh, mm -hmm. in between talking. It's a lot of talking, you know. So <laughs> we'll do a little Jack uh, drawing. Now, when I draw Jack, uh, let me see. Make sure I have a gray marker here. I do. Okay. Um, so the Jack books. If you guys haven't seen those, if you're not familiar, I haven't shown these yet, but they were written by my friend Mac Barnett, um, and we made. We've made nine books together, but we made eight Jack books. Um, so here's one, Jack gets zapped. This is the one where he gets sucked into a video game. Uh, Mac and I both like video games a lot, so we wanted to do one. Uh, this is Jack at the zoo. Jack goes west. Too many Jacks. There's a lot of Jack. So one of the things that was important to me uh, when we were sort of creating uh, the series was I wanted to have a how to draw section at the end to show everyone how to draw Jack. The idea there is that kids could write their own Jack stories. Um, you know, Jack goes to the moon is one that we did. Um, Jack blasts off. Jack and Santa is one that we did. Um, but I thought, you know, maybe kids could come up with their own ideas. Um, and it's been great because kids oftentimes will send me yeah, I was uh, cover if... images of their, you know, it's, it's a lot of times it's like King Jack or Jack goes to McDonald's, you know, kind of kid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they like. No, so, um, so Greg, your uh, Jack ideas. Well, any, maybe Croc is do doing something different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I right. That. Yeah, I, uh, Croc goes to McDonald's or some, something like that. <laughs> um, so when I draw Jack, um, I typically start with his hat. He wears a baseball cap. Uh, Mac and I both often wear baseball caps. So uh, that when we talked about the character, we thought he should have like a distinctive cap. Um, and I just kind of start with an upside down circle. And here, and he has a big letter J on his hat in a white circle so I just kind of leave that open and sometimes I will draw with shapes rather than doing outlines sometimes I just do big shapes just kind of depends on how I'm feeling now Jack is a rabbit no it's kind of hard to tell sometimes people think he's a dog because he's wearing a hat so his ears uh, flop down a lot, but he's actually a rabbit, and he's got these floppy ears. Jack rabbit, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's a jack rabbit, right? Are you using Tombow marker pens there? What, often people like. What to are these materials that you? Um, Kuratake, I think they're called. Okay, nice. I have some of the Tombow ones here. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. these are the Tombow. Yeah, these are nice as well, but uh, these ones. These ones I like um, really because they have a, a low opacity. So mm -hmm. if I want to mix colors, they uh, they work really well. Like if I want to draw yellow over or blue over yellow or something to make a green, it works really well. I use them for sketchbooking quite a bit. I haven't used them for final art for anything. Right. Um, but 
I'm doing a book right now with paper cutouts and um, I think I might use them for that. So then I try to draw his body just kind of like a rectangular shape and fill this in a little bit. I think my yellow marker is starting to die a little bit. Um, and for this, you know, sometimes I'll use very simple shapes for the colors. And then with the, the black line work, if I'm gonna do some black line, um, I will use a more expressive pen rather than the same kind of marker. So it's sort of contrast with the, the bold sort of shape a little bit. Um, and I really like this pen. This is probably my favorite pen to draw with. Um, and it's fairly inexpensive, which is another thing I like about it, but it's called a Pentel pocket brush pen. Mm -hmm. Probably like $10 and you get a few cartridges with that. Um, and you can get this at like Blick or, you know, most art stores. Um, and I really like it quite a bit. So maybe I'll do his J with that. And so it has like a, a nice line quality to it. Oh, sorry, Claire, what are you going to say? Um, well, I didn't quite catch how you spelt the Kurataki pens. And um, Kristen would love us to just type that into the chat. So how do you spell it? <laughs> oh, sure. You know what? Well, so Kurataki, I guess, is the manufacturer. But the name of the pen, it looks like is, uh, I'm not sure how you say that. But it's F-U-D-E-B-I-Y-O-R-I. -I. OK, Huda Biori. Did everyone Huda Biori, that? Yeah. We'll, we'll get that into the chat, don't worry. And also the Pentel brush pen, that's another one. Yeah, it's called the Pentel pocket brush pen. Oh, sorry, pocket brush pen, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those tips. Yeah. Because I yeah, do, so probably you do, sorry to, that, you know, good materials do help you enjoy your um, process of drawing. <laughs> Just wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, th I think like, um, I'm not someone who's super precious with, uh, some of my materials, like I draw on copy paper a, a lot of the time. I, um, you know, some people really like like toothy, expensive, cold press or hot press paper. Um, I draw on copy paper or in my sketchbook a, a lot. Um, but I would say I do have kind of a problem with markers and pencils in that. I have probably a thousand pencils in my studio. And if I were to go into an art store today, I would walk out with at least five pencils um, <laughs> because I just, I sort of covet pencils in a, in a way that is borderline unhealthy, I think. Yeah. It's like art material, um, like candy stores. <laughs> yeah, it, it's art material stores are, you know, it's just fun. It's fun to get new tools and to try them out. and. What I found though is a lot of the time I uh, just end up using the stuff that I always use. <laughs> I end up like kind of falling back on the, like I've been using the Pentel pocket brush pen for, you know, probably 12 years or something. And I just, I fall back on it all the time. Um, but, you know, I think it's good to try new things out for sure. Um, so I maybe overwork this a little bit. I think that's a risk sometimes, but I'll say, you know, so that's Jack. Yay. <laughs> Jack from the uh, from the hijack series. Yeah. Um, I drew him many, many times uh, in the course of illustrating those eight books. Um, so I can I could draw him blindfolded, I'm pretty sure. Um, all right. So the other thing I wanted to just talk about, if you're thinking about writing a graphic novel, I wanted to show you guys one of my graphic novels here. So let me grab one. And I will show you a little bit about these graphic novels because I bet there are some people here who are interested in comics, who either like reading comics a lot or are interested in writing comics. And that's kind of you know how I got started was that I always loved comics as a kid. Um, my favorite books to read as a kid were Calvin and Hobbes and Peanuts and Garfield. I loved you know, I loved basically anything that was a comic, the far side I loved as a kid. Um, yeah. 
but I was always intimidated to make my own comic because I just thought that it was too it was going to be too hard, you know, it, to draw so many panels, so many pictures, so many pages, it was just going to be uh, tough. So what I did was I came up with a format. Uh, and I'll just show you the table of contents here for the first Bologna and Friends book. And Bologna and Friends is not just one long story. It's several shorter comics um, that kind of, I kind of think of it as like a TV show and each of the stories is like a little episode. Um, and it stars these four characters, Baloney the pig, Peanut the horse, Biz the bumblebee, and Crabbit the very, very grumpy rabbit, right? So you kind of get a picture of their friendship and their personalities through the different uh, sort of sketches, but there isn't one long story that's linking them all together. It's just always about those four friends. But also like the Jack series, at the end, I wanted to show you how to draw each of them, how to draw bologna, how to draw peanuts, how to draw biz, and even how to draw Kravitz. Because the idea is that if there are kids who like me as a kid wanted to make their own comics, uh, and, you know, I would uh, draw Garfield constantly. I would try to copy Calvin and Hobbes drawings uh, as well as I could. And uh, I kind of wish that there were instructions like that uh, back in the day. So I thought maybe we could draw a little bit together. And then each of the Baloney and Friends books has a different how-to activity at the end. Um, and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the how to draw or the how to make an activity uh, from book number three, which is not even out yet, but it's how to make your own mini book. But I thought first we would just do a little how to draw. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about these characters uh, as I draw them. So let me just get a little bit of room here. See if I can put that right there. All right. And I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna start with baloney. All right, this book just fell over here. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to start with Baloney. You know, Baloney is kind of the everyman character. Um, he's kind of the, he's obviously the star of the book. Um, and when I draw him, I wanted to make him easy to draw because I knew that I was going to be drawing him over and over again but I also kind of wanted him to be very distinctive. I had done a couple books with pigs already in it and I wanted him to feel very different from those pigs that I'd already drawn. So I cribbed uh, a technique from my friend, Bob Shea, who's a very uh, inspiring and talented uh, picture book maker and probably the funniest person I know. And when we were drawing together one time, he told me that he starts all of his characters uh, by drawing like a bean, like like kind of like a bean shape. So when I draw baloney, and I'll try to draw them big enough so you guys can see them, I kind of draw like a bean shape like that, right? And if you want to draw in pencil, you can, you know, colored pencil, whatever you like to draw. There is a spot that I typically erase uh, over here, but I don't really worry about it if I don't do it either. It's okay. Um, I think the mistakes are kind of the part that people like a lot of the time anyway. So uh, then I give him a snout just by drawing a circle. Just a circle shape like that. Give him a little nose. It's, you know, he's kind of like you have like a side view of baloney. Um, and then if you want, if you drew in pencil, you can erase this part, but you don't really need to. You can erase this part here where they overlap. And then I give him some eyes. And I'm just going to give him his eye shape. So I'm not going to draw the pupils. We can talk about that. But it's just kind of like ovally eyes like that. And give him a couple of snout holes so he can breathe, right? Just a couple little holes like that. And then his ears are just little teardrop shapes. And his ears are somewhat expressive, like Jack in the Jack books, like if he's excited about something. Um, 
both baloney and crabbit have ears that kind of talk a little bit, uh, depending on what's happening in the story. His legs are just the letter U, much like Croc. And his arms are very similar to the letter U too. Uh, maybe a little more complex, but not much. I'll make him waving at us, just like that. And his tail is just a little curly cue, like that. So the reason I didn't draw the pupils until the very end is, I think that is kind of like the moment when your character can be most expressive. And when you're doing a graphic novel, the thing that I have found, um, I don't know if this is true for everyone, but what I found is that they take a long time to draw and they're very quick to read, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have, been, uh, I haven't done a ton of signing since these books came out because of uh, the COVID pandemic, but I've done a few and I have um, had kids who have read the entire book while they were waiting in line to get it signed. So they uh, are quick readers and um, they go through graphic novels very quickly. So my point is that you want your character to be able to be read sort of what emotion are they having? What are they feeling? What are they thinking? Really quickly at a glance. And so the expression is a big part of that. And if I wanted Baloney, for example, I'll just do some over here. If I wanted him to be feeling kind of sad, you know, maybe I would have him looking down like this, the bottom of his eyes. Maybe I would uh, you know, give him kind of a lid like that. If I wanted him to be very suspicious, maybe I would have him kind of looking to the side like that. <laughs> if I wanted him to be sort of contemplative, like he's thinking about something or he's trying to look innocent or he's not really, you know, he's trying to sort of whistle and not get noticed, maybe I'd have them looking that way. Um, so there's a lot that you can do just with simple placement of the pupils themselves. So um, like I said before, you know, simple doesn't necessarily mean easy, right? So I'm gonna do kind of an easy one here though. And I'm just gonna have them with a big smile and just have them looking right at the camera, just like that. Um, and that's baloney. That's how you draw baloney there. Um, and I will also show you, since we read a peanut story, I'll show you how I draw peanut. I'm going to turn my paper this way because peanut is very tall. And peanut uh, is often, I think peanut is just the same shape as the crocodile from the watermelon seed. So kind of like an ovally shape a straightish line, doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And the letter U, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna draw a peanut. I'm gonna start by drawing her head, which is just a sideways U, like that. And then her body, again, is just the letter U. So you are both drawn using simple shapes. I'll finish drawing peanut, but I, before I forget, I just wanted to say they're drawn using you know similar simple shapes, um, but they're pretty different from one another. Like peanut is a lot taller than baloney. Um, obviously, she's a different color. But I, when I was designing these characters, I wanted them to be easily readable as four distinct characters. Like so, I wanted. Peanut to be much taller than baloney, have kind of a different head shape. Crabbit has his ears that are really distinctive. And Biz obviously is very, very different. Even though they all are created using the same three or four same shapes, I did a process which is which I call, I don't know if this is a technical term or not, but I call it silhouetting, where I would draw the character in black and just not have the color of the character, just kind of draw like, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Like I would draw baloney just like this, really simple. Uh, and so color him in. 
or even like that. And then draw Peanut next to him. Mm. And I would draw all four characters like that without any of their features or any anything else going on, just to make sure that I could very easily tell, you know, tell them apart. Um, whereas like if I had made it two pigs and I don't know, one was green and the other one was orange, but they were the same shape. You wouldn't know who was who. It, might be, it would be kind of confusing as to like who was who. Um, so particularly because I'm writing for kids who are just learning to read maybe, or this is one of their first big graphic novels, this is their first hundred page book that they've read or something. I wanted uh, to not put any of those potential roadblocks where it might be confusing for them. Um, okay, so Peanut, uh, so we've done two U shapes here. So, and she is the tallest of the group, right? Like she has these straight lines that come down, two straight lines and then a little straight line for her legs. And then her arms, Peanut is very exuberant and very excited. And she's like me in that, you know, she gesticulates with her hands a lot when she talks. And so she's often like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> what are we talking about? Like, where are we going? Um, and so she's often has her arms like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's just like a U shape with a straight line and another U. Let me see, it's like, if you break it down, I like to break my characters down into those uh, shapes so that in, into like simple shapes so that I can feel confident that I'll be able to draw them over and over again in a similar way. Excellent. Um, and give her a snout here. And then her ears are just upside down letter U's. And same with her mane. Her mane is just kind of little upside down U's. I usually do about 10 or so. And then her tail is just three U shapes. U, U, U. So again, I wait until the very end to do her face. I wait, I wait until the very end, give her her eyes. And maybe we'll make Peanut looking a little suspicious. Like she's a little like somebody Something's happening and she's like a little unsure of what's going on. And sometimes when I draw, I find, I don't know if anybody else is like this, you might make the face that you're trying to draw. Like if you're looking, if you're drawing suspicious, you might make kind of a suspicious face. Um, maybe that's just me, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, we can make her. Model. <laughs> mm. So um, Greg, Darlene said in the chat that she buys all your books for her grandchildren and for herself which I, I oh. know <laughs> love graphic novels. They love picture books as well. So your fans of every age, Greg. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you very much for buying two copies of every book. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that um, definitely kids are my audience first and foremost. But, um, you know, as an adult who is an avid reader, I like reading comics a lot. And I like reading kids, uh, kids comics a lot, too. I yes. um, have have read all of, I think, all of the Dogman series. And oh, Dogman. One, yeah. one of my favorite series um, that I think sadly has been retired is the Ariel series uh, by Emmanuel Guibert and um, Oh uh, gosh, what is the Mark Mark Budavon is the illustrator? I mean, just unbelievable. I love that series so much. Um, um, so yeah, I read. Uh, so I, I try to. I don't really maybe put jokes in necessarily just for the adults, uh, the way that you know, some books do. Um, but I <laughs> I do uh, try to make it entertaining for for everyone who might be reading. Um, so we have a little bit of time left and I wanna make sure that there's time for Q and A, but I also want to show you guys how to make a book because I promised that if you brought a piece of paper and a pair of scissors, I would show you how to make a book. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a sneak peek because you were uh, nice enough to join me here. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of the third Bologna and Friends book which is not, I don't even have a copy of it. I just have proofs, but this is what the cover is going to look like. It's called Bologna and Friends Dream Big. 
comes out in uh, February of 2022. You can see Crabbit, very oh, fluffy yes. Crabbit is on the spine there. <laughs> and like the other books, it's several different stories. It's a lot of different uh, stories in one. And at the very end, you uh, have instructions how to make a mini book. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a mini book. The supplies you will need are paper, scissors, a pencil, and a sense of humor, right? Yeah. You need a sense of humor because uh, maybe, it, maybe it won't go well the first time you do it, and you might have to do it again. So you need to bring your sense of humor with you, all right? But I'm going to show you guys how I do it. So if you want to grab a sheet of paper, just an eight and a half by 11 piece of copy paper, just regular, I don't know, normal printer paper, uh, that would be great. And I will get to questions right after we yes. do this book here. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fold our book. So just watch me, I should say, watch me, let me do it before you do anything. You're going to fold your paper in what I call a hot dog fold. So it looks kind of like a hot dog bun, which means that you're going to fold it like so. And when I fold, I get the corners lined up nice and carefully. I get really get the corners lined up. And then I go with my finger like that. And then I take my fingernail and I really fold. Okay. So I have my paper now is folded like a hot dog. Okay. All right. I'm vegetarian. So I'm going to say like a veggie dog. All right. Like a veggie dog fold. All right. And then we're going to open our paper back up. So it's folded, but you're gonna open it back up. And then we're gonna fold it like a hamburger or a veggie burger, veggie burger, I should say. All right. And again, you're gonna line your corners up very carefully, make sure your corners are touching and kind of do it lightly with your finger and then come back and do it with your fingernail. So now you've got it folded twice, right? All right. So now you're going to open your paper back up. Open your paper back up. And you're going to take each side. So you're going to take this side and fold it into this center line here. So you're going to take this, line it up to that center fold, and carefully fold it with your finger, and then your fingernail. Right. I'm going to do that again just to sort of slow it down for anybody who, who didn't follow along. You're going to just take the edge here and fold it into that center fold like that. And you're going to do that on both sides. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to let you know a few of your participants are saying a few things that they have in common with you. So um, Caitlin is a vegetarian. Actually, oh, good. Riley is a vegan and um, Caitlin was saying, you know, she absolutely loves comics. She's nine. And I think nine is actually a very good age to be trying to make your own comics because you must have so many ideas by the time you're nine, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's a great time to get started for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, well, it's always nice to meet other vegetarians. I've been vegetarian uh, for a long time. Um, I was vegan for a while, but... Um, did you miss cheese? You know, I sort of, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I I wasn't the healthiest of vegans, let's say. So like it was easier for me to reintroduce dairy into my diet um, than it was to to not have it at all. Um, but I applaud anyone who can make it work for them. All right, so you guys should all have now eight little uh, panels, right? Your paper should have been folded this way and then this way, right? You're going to open it way back up. And then you're going to fold it like a hamburger again, OK? So your paper should be folded like this, like a hamburger. Now, this side here should be open. And this side here should be a fold. And you're going to grasp from the fold side. This is where your scissors come in. And just on the folded side, not on this side here where it's open, 
just on the folded side. You're gonna very carefully cut this line down the center just to the middle. So I'm just gonna go very careful, 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 careful. Just like that, okay? My wife, when she does this, because my wife is a teacher, uh, in addition to being an artist, she says it's like she's making a little pair of pants. Yeah. Right? Like making a little pair of pants there. Okay. That's what you need. All right. So I'm just going to give everybody a second to do that. Cut very, very carefully. All right. Push those out of the way. And now, almost there. We're almost done. We're going to open our paper back up and refold it like a hot dog. So it's like this. All right. You got your hot dog fold. And then this is where the sort of like, this is the magic moment. This is the part where it's sort of like, it's like a magic trick, right? So you're gonna take your paper, hold it like this, and you're going to, maybe you might need to help it open up a little bit in the middle. And you're gonna open it and push towards the center and then fold it over like that. All right, I'm gonna do that again, just for anybody who needs to watch it one more time. You're gonna fold it like a hot dog, hot dog fold, and then push the pages towards the center, push the ends towards the center, and it's gonna fold just like that. Okay, and now what you have is a little eight page book. All right, it's a little eight page book. And what I do is, I'll make one like that. So, I mean, I would do it a few times just to get a hang of it. It's only, it's only gonna cost you a, a piece of paper every time. But what I do is I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number the pages like that. And it makes a little guide for me so that when I want to make design a book, I know exactly where each page is like, I could draw the cover here and I could draw the first page here, do it that way. All right, so using just one sheet of paper, you can make your own book just like that. Great um, little thing to know about because wherever you are, if you, you know, are sitting somewhere and you're waiting for somebody, maybe you're at your parents' office and you're just like, oh, uh, what can I do? You just need a piece of copy paper, some scissors and a pencil and you can make yourself a mini book. <laughs> so yeah, piece of paper, it's great. That's right. All right, um, well, yeah, I would love to take any questions that anybody has. We have a little bit of time left, right, Claire? I would, I would love to do that. Yeah, we've got a yeah, we've got a few minutes left. So if anybody has any questions or wants to see uh, Greg draw any more characters that they might be interested in, don't forget there's um, Owl and other characters that are in Greg's books. Um, so I'm just looking through now. Um, so Cheryl's wondering what age group are you specifically writing for? Do you uh, have your books sort of geared towards? Is there, I think. It could be anybody who's interested in comic books, of course, but maybe, as you said, a starting reader, right? Somebody who's just like starting to read their own um, easier read book, easier to read books. So yeah, I think. Yeah, I think my main audience is what um, I have come to call emerging readers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, no matter what age that may be, it may be kids who are in kindergarten. It may be kids who are in the fourth grade. Um, you know, but they are deciding and choosing to pick books up on their own and read them to themselves. Yeah. Um, a lot of my books for younger kids, uh, like The Watermelon Seed, for example, those are typically read to a child, like mm -hmm. to a kid who's, you know, in the lap of their parent or at a story time in a library. Um, mm -hmm. And I like writing for, for that age range a lot as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I've sort of like recognized that that magic moment when a kid decides I'm going to be a reader, I'm going to choose to spend my free time doing this thing that's kind of difficult for me to do. It's kind of hard to read uh, when you first get out. You don't know what all the words mean and you don't, uh, 
necessarily you struggle a little bit with it. Um, I really like writing for that group in particular. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so, uh, but I, I kind of write all over. I wrote a, uh, my next picture book is kind of uh, more geared towards babies. I kind of wrote it after my daughter was born. Yeah, I was reading a lot of babies inspired. with her. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely inspired by, by uh, all the baby books that I was reading. Um, and we still are. Um, but my, and I have a book coming out next summer. It's a nonfiction book, um, which is the history of pizza. Amazing. Um, and so that's kind of like an older, you know, maybe like first through fifth grade, sixth grade kind of thing. But I think also I'm hoping that adults who just like pizza or like there's someone in your life who's like, usually I think in every friend group, there's like the pizza person. There's like the one person who's like obsessed with pizza. And I'm hoping it's, you know, will appeal like, oh, I'm going to get them this pizza book yeah, too. It's great. Yeah. Pizza is very popular all over the world. It's uh, the best food. Yeah. It's the best food. Um, so also we have other questions like, do you ever work on an iPad? Do you work digitally as well? Um, I do work digitally. I don't have an iPad. Um, I don't, I, you know, I see all my friends, everyone that I follow on Instagram uh, is drawing with Procreate on an iPad with an Apple Pencil. Um, I've never owned an iPad. Um, it, it's something that I think at this point in my creative career, I can see the argument for it. I think like mm -hmm. um, it probably makes things a lot easier. Um, I don't think that, I think the final art that I see it done on the iPad sometimes, it starts to look a little samey to me. And I would worry that I don't know enough about like tweaking it and making it like distinctively mine enough to sort of correct that um, but I do draw in Photoshop a lot but I use a, a what's called a Wacom tablet um, mm -hmm. it's it's not one of the screen ones it's just kind of like a big piece of plastic that I draw on um, and um, but at this at this point in my creative life I'm trying to get away from screens a little more so I um, like I said I'm doing a cut paper book um, uh, where I'm not using the computer for that. Um, and I have a book that, I, or a series of books that I'm hoping to, to pitch and to start working on soon that I want to draw in pencil. Oh. Um, so it's just, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time, particularly during COVID on screens, and it's not, uh, it's not something I want to do as much as part of my creative work anymore. Materials, yeah, I, 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 lots of people do. Um, actually, we've got a few more questions here. So Grayson, who's okay. asking, which is your favorite book? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is my favorite book uh, uh, in general? Um, That's what I was wondering, is it in general or is it one of your books that you've created? I'm sure they're all like your children, you know, you love them all in different ways, but is there actually, let's just take it to, yeah, he is asking, which is your favorite book of the ones you've done. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, usually my favorite book is whatever I'm working on at the moment. So like my favorite book now is like the one that I'm writing right now. I think it's brilliant, but no one else is, uh, uh, doesn't even have a publisher yet. <laughs> um, and then uh, usually though, um, there are, there are books that I return to that I, um, you know, feel really proud of. Um, and I think the one that I really enjoy reading with audiences the most, that when I'm, when I'm on tour or whatever, is my book, Good Night Owl. Um, yeah, I love that book. Yeah. I, I really, oh, move my camera a little bit, but I, this book right here, Good Night Owl, I think um, is one that, if I get a chance to read in front of an audience and I can only pick one book, this is, is usually the one that I'd pick. You'll be reading that to your daughter <laughs> when she's uh, trying to, go, you'll read it lots and lots of times. Um, Riley, yeah. draw a bee. Do you have time to draw a quick bee? And oh, sure, biz the bee. Yeah, we can, bee. Draw. You can answer a couple of other questions. Eleanor would like to know, do you prefer sunny or rainy days? <laughs> do I prefer sunny or rainy days? That's oh, an interesting question, right? Because you might like hmm. different reasons if you've had too much. Sleep. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, it kind of it kind of depends, I guess, on how sunny and how rainy, right? Oh. I don't mind a little. I don't mind a little bit of rain. Um, but uh, you know, I really I really like San Francisco. I think because of the weather there, uh, you sort of like what do they call the fog there? Uh, Carl, I think is the name of the fog. Um, so 
he rolls in around two or three o'clock every afternoon. And I think that's nice. I like Portland, Oregon a lot because you can mm -hmm. uh, kind of get some rainy days with some sun mixed in. But uh, I'd say probably sunny days would be if I had to pick only one. Better lighting for drawing, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. So also I, my, do my dog doesn't like to be walked in the rain. So that's, yeah. that's yeah. problematic. <laughs> Is your dog a puppy? No, she's six, although I've had her since she, since she was a puppy. Oh, yeah, because the picture, she looked very young. Oh, that was that was a puppy picture, yeah. It was a puppy picture, okay. Um, also, you mentioned um, a series of, uh, that you liked when you were speaking about graphic novels, and it was called Ariel. And um, Luke would like to know, could you uh, tell us again who was the writer and illustrator? Uh, sure. The the writer is his name's Emmanuel Guibert, I think is how you say his name. So it's I, I believe it's G U I B E R T. Mm -hmm. um, and the illustrator is Mark Boudavant. Um, and his last name. Um, let me see if I can spell it. B something like this <laughs> b-o-u-t-a-v-a-n-t oh, yeah, some, yeah, something yeah. like that yes. um and you know what i can pick you guys up and take you over to the bookshelf if you want and i can show you what those books look like they were originally published in france um but they were brought to the u.s uh by paper cuts the comic publisher paper cuts and i think there's 11 or 12 of them um, at least I have 11 or 12 of them. I'm not sure if there are any more. Oh, here's a fun one. Leah would like to know, can we hear yes. how you sing the line, Baloney and Friends, when Baloney is singing it in the book? Oh, this is from oh, Noah sure. Five. Sorry, from Noah I wonder if this, I wonder if that's the, what was the name of that, that person that asked that question? Uh, Noah, whose mother is Leah Farron. Okay, no. Well, okay. I had I had some kids on Instagram. Um, I think they were it was they were all girls though. Um, who uh came up with their own melody for it and you know uh had their own theme song. And I have to admit that um before I wrote this, before I wrote this comic, and definitely as I was making the book, I was humming this tune constantly. Um to the point that I think it was driving my my wife out of her mind because uh, she just had it in her head all the time. Um, so Jingle. I'm not a singer by any means. I have no musical talent of any kind. So you can't, uh, don't judge the, the book on my musical <laughs> talent. And let me take a little sip of water here, but I can show you what drove my wife to, to near madness. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, here we go. I just might as well just go to the very end. Where is Paul? Here we go. Baloney and friends, together till the end. It's time for baloney and friends. There's Peanut the horse, and Biz too, of course. And don't forget Crabbit, he's a very grumpy rabbit. It's time for baloney and friends. Yay! So that's, that's how I do it. So. Thank you so much, Greg. That, that really brings it to life. You see it on TV any day now. <laughs> right, right, great. It'll be forever uh memorialized on youtube my thing my great singing exactly. exactly oh i have to make a correction on um somebody who was asking about your sunny and rainy days preferences that was from azucena i think that's how you pronounce her beautiful name not elena so it's azucena i think she might be italian i don't know <laughs> oh okay okay yeah that's <laughs> well, thank you. For, thank you for the question. Uh, and yes. it's not as not Eleanor, but Eleanor is my dog's name. So, that's, that's uh, right. so let me see if I can um, just lift you guys up here. And right. uh, I can it's show you some of those, some of those books over here. You're gonna have to, Ooh, we get to, see, to see, see my setup a little bit. <laughs> this my, my extra light that I had. Oh, so yeah, this is my kitchen here, my studio kitchen. Nice. I have a little patio out there um and then uh let me see if i can just give you a 360. can't get the, the laptop away from me enough there we go yeah this is kind of what my studio looks like a lot of mirrors and i'll take you over to the bookshelf and show you that aerial 
one of the many bookshelves I have. Here we go. The whole series is ah. at least what I have here. And the first one, uh, no, that's number six. First one, number one, looks like this. Wonderful. There you go, everybody. Ariel, just a donkey girl. like you and me. So this, this book was very, very influential uh, in inspiring me to write Bologna and Friends. It's much more complex uh, than Bologna and Friends, but what it has in common is that it has short kind of chapters, like self-contained mm -hmm. stories about the same characters, um, which I really, really like. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, we have some of our participants that are familiar with the series. Riley said she loves that series. It's a great series. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. A question here. Um, oh, oh, what's your favorite um, video game? Elliot would like to know that. And Malcolm is asking, he sees many video games and characters on your bookshelf. Well observed. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's great, as Luke says, seeing how other artists are, you know, inspired by artists that they admire. So, you know, it's great to see what you're sharing with us, all your inspirations as well. And as you are inspiring everybody who's participating this morning. So, yeah, fantastic um, insight on how you create your characters. How do you come up with your ideas? I think somebody asked that just as a final question to be answered. Sure. Come up with your wonderful sure. ideas? <laughs> Um, well, I'll ask or I'll answer. I think someone asked what my favorite video game was. I yes. I don't know that I could narrow it down to one game, but I, I really love the Zelda series, Legend of Zelda, and I really love the Super Mario series. Those I, those two series, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. play those games a lot. Um, and where do I come up with the ideas or how do I get the, the ideas? I think, you know, a lot of times people will ask that question and, uh, you know, a slightly different way, they'll ask me, you know, which Bologna and Friends character are you? You know, which one do you most identify with? And I think that I identify with all of them. Um, you know, Bologna is just kind of my regular, everyday, normal self. Peanut is when I'm very, very excited about something, when I'm sort of like a fan of something, um, or I'm excited about it. Crabbit is when, you know, maybe I haven't had enough coffee or I need a snack and I'm a little crabby. And Biz is uh, when I'm uh, maybe a little bit of a know-it-all, uh, you know, like when I'm talking about something that I'm really passionate about, like music or, um, you know, games or, or books or something, I uh, might be a little biz, busy, busy bee. Um, and so I think about like, situations that I have had in my life or um, things that I can kind of twist a little bit to make them a little funnier, like the fear of ang uh, and anxiety of swallowing a watermelon seed yes. or um, good night owls about hearing a noise in the middle of the night and yeah. um, sort of like not knowing what it is, you know, uh, something is scary when you can't know what it is, but then at the end of the book, when you when he sees what it is he's not scared of it anymore at all um so i think i try to think of like fears and anxieties and sort of funny things that have happened to me and then figure out a way to that's make an animal good, character that's a good tip actually um everybody to just write about things that you feel or that have happened to you or that you might be worried about or something that excites you so speaking from your own experience you can put that into your characters and your stories well, yeah, Rick, yeah. such a pleasure having you this morning. I believe I have to quick check. Yeah, we're just over uh, 12. So we have run on just a tiny bit, but boy, has it been worth it. I tell you, we've got so many participants writing in the chat how much they've loved this. Thank you, Greg, so much. We love learning about your process and some fun tidbits. And oh, thank you so much for just inspiring us this morning. I love your stories. Um, your characters are so cool. Uh, this is amazing thank you wonderful yeah well thank thank you claire uh for having me thank you thank you Lindsay, for doing all the, the stuff the scenes, in, the, in the background <laughs> thank you very much very and thank you everyone for joining uh for having for having me and i hope you guys will uh check out the bologna friends series i hope oh, you like it <laughs>